After three large-scale offenses by the Ming fail, things back in China are uneasy. I'm Stefan, and this is Japan at War. War is expensive. Even for an empire as powerful as the Ming, soldiers have to be paid and fed, weapons and armor supplied. And then you have to get them to the fight itself. With all that in mind, it should come to no surprise that the Ming treasuries were quite strained at this time. News of the recent failures were now pouring into Beijing. The Wanli Emperor was understandably upset after hearing the most recent reports. He then issued out an edict reprimanding the commanders Dong Yi Yuan, Ma Guoi, Liu Ting, and some of the commanders under them. Words like conceited, cowardly and effeminate were used in this edict. He goes on to criticize the commanders for disregarding the fighting skill of their enemy. He would go on to say, the military divisions of our army were neither distributed or handled in accordance with the military laws set by our empire. Commands issued by the military were not in force nor obeyed. It's because of this, when a division of the army had to retreat, the other divisions all fled the field and brought disgrace upon our entire army. The men of our military have disgraced and dishonored our empire and have damaged our military prestige and standing. Dong Yi Yuan's army faced the harshest punishments, as they were seen to have faced the worst loss. Two of Dong Yi Yuan's commanders were actually beheaded and another received a suspended death sentence. Basically, if this man could prove himself, he would be safe. Dong Yi Yuan himself would be demoted an entire rank. And while all this was happening, on the Japanese side, news of Toyotomi Hideyoshi's death was reaching the ears of the commanders in Korea. Not just this, but also Hideyoshi's wish that the war be over. Asano Nagamasa and Ishida Mitsunari were now on their way to Nagoya on Kyushu to organize the withdrawal of all their forces. In Busan, Tokunaga Toshimasa and Miyagi Toyomori were there with the instructions that all Japanese forces were to withdraw as quickly and with as much dignity as possible. Of course, Kanishi Yukinaga was already making political plans of his own to solve this, while commanders like Kato Kiyomasa and Nabashima Naoshige resisted the idea. They felt that they had poured way too much of themselves to just give up. However, they were in the minority. And when the majority of commanders let it be known that they would be pulling out, the rest had no choice but also agree. That is to say, unless they wanted to be surrounded. The Ming, of course, knew that the Japanese were wanting to withdraw. First was the fact that half the forces had already left, a very noticeable event. But even if they hadn't noticed that, then they would have known from Kanishi Yukinaga's letter that he had sent to Liu Ting before the attack on Sinchan. The Ming, for the most part, actually seemed willing to just let the Japanese just withdraw. The Koreans felt a bit differently. They wanted revenge but their armies were pretty much worn out. If they attacked on land, they would not only be outnumbered, well, quite frankly, they would be annihilated. But on water, it was different. The Korean Navy was still formidable, and they knew it. On December 5th, Yi Sun Sin and Ming Naval Commander Chen Lin received a dispatch that Kanishi Yukinaga would soon be evacuating his forces and combined their fleets and made their way towards his fortress and then anchored their ships near a small island and blocked the way out of Kwangyang Bay. Kanishi, of course, saw this and was a bit confused. He didn't understand what they were there for. After all, they were planning on leaving, so maybe they were just there to see him off? December 10th, 10 Japanese ships went out towards the Allied blockade, most likely to test what the Allied Navy would do. They were, of course, attacked and pushed back. This confused and angered Kanishi Yukinaga, who had previously contacted Liu Ting and thought that they had an agreement 
that they would just be able to leave unmolested. Liu Ting had even sent him hostages to prove his intentions. Kunishi, in his anger, had two of the hostages' hands cut off and sent to the main commander to show how upset he was. Interestingly enough, Liu Ting simply replied that he needed to take it up with the Ming naval commander on the water, Chen Lin. Kunishi accepted this and made plans to have gifts sent to him to soften him up. The next day, swords, pigs, and a barrel of sake was sent along with the request that they let him and his men leave. This was repeated on the 12th and 13th, and by December 13th, Chen Lin was giving signs that he would agree to this. But winning over Chen Lin would only be half the battle. Yi Sun Sin was the real obstacle, and gifts wouldn't sway him, though gifts were indeed sent to him. He, of course, refused them, though. Chen Lin decided in the meantime to send a request to Kanishi Yukinaga, give up Nanhai, and also send him 2,000 Japanese heads. Kanishi said that he would do this, but by this time he was actually sending out requests for help from the other Japanese commanders. He wouldn't actually do this. He just needed more time. It would seem that the two naval commanders were now arguing about what to do. However, it seems like Yi Sun Sin wasn't as aggressive as popular sources seem to suggest. Either way, it's impossible to be sure about the argument itself. On December the 14th, Kanishi Yukinaga sent one last representative to Chen Lin with a simple request to let a single ship through the blockade so that it could sell east and let the rest of the garrisons know to proceed with the evacuation. Chen Lin agreed, and then made its way as quick as it could to Shimizu Yoshihiro, who had left Sachan and was now at Cheng Xiongdo. Yoshihiro felt that he didn't currently have the manpower to save Kanishi though. So after discussing it with Tachibana Munishige, he sent out a messenger to Kato Kiyomasa to ask for help. Kiyomasa agreed to help, but of course having a deep hatred of Kanishi and his Christian ways, this was a lie. Instead, on the 15th, he moved from Ulsan to Busan, and from there he would go back to Japan. Shimizu Yoshihiro was understandably angry. He didn't think that they would be able to defeat the Allied Ming Navy. He also didn't want to leave a fellow commander to die, which would damage his standing and honor. He committed himself to helping still. Yi Sun Sin would hear about this later in the day and panic. If the enemy attacked, they could be engaged from both sides, something few people could survive. It was at this time that one of the lower naval officers came forward and said that instead of waiting, that they should meet the enemy fleet before it could join forces with Kunishi. The commander's name was Song Hui Rip. Yi Sun Sin then went to Chen Lin and begged him to help him with the coming assault. Chen Lin didn't really seem to care either way. It seems in his mind, if they simply weren't there, the Japanese would leave either way, and that was the goal, right? But Yi was relentless and continued to beg. Chen Lin, in the end, agreed to help. That night, the men of the Allied Navy were served a hearty feast. They then raised anchor and moved east under darkness to the Noryang Strait. If the enemy was in fact coming, they would have to come this way. And this is where I will leave you. Slash that like button and prepare yourself for the next episode. It's the last battle of the war. I'll see you next time.